So why exactly did Justin admit that he has no plans to go beyond those platitudes? What's he afraid to say? Time for some Friday Fury with Anthony Fury, national affairs columnist for Sun Media. Anthony, I think a lot of us have bent over backwards trying to take Justin seriously. We, we, we do take him seriously as a political fact of life in, in a world where there is so much apathy and where nature abhors a vacuum, he could move in. So I, I take it seriously that he actually could become prime minister. But how do I take this stuff seriously? Yeah, you're right. He definitely could become prime minister, which is testament to uh, a number of curious things uh, going on in our country right now, seeing as the fact that Justin Trudeau recently said, I am not going to release a platform in the liberal leadership at all during the liberal leadership, he was suggesting. We're going to do that later. Right now, it's about, I don't know, party rebuilding, listening. It's about running for leadership and winning. This is very bizarre, Charles. I, I don't know when it became acceptable for people to not have ideas. I mean, this guy, and let's remember, politicians, we owe them nothing, and they owe us everything. What do they owe? They owe to articulate a vision of the country and then say to people, these are my views, this is what I will do if elected, and if you want to get behind me, vote for me. This is not what Justin's doing at all. Although, in his defense, it's not what many politicians are doing these days either. I, I honestly don't get it, though. And as I say, I'm, I'm trying to be as gracious, as generous, bend over backwards, all the rest of it. But a, a leader has to do more than, than listen. A leader has to interact. A leader has to tell you and me and all Canadians where it is he wants to, to lead us. I mean, this thing can listen. I mean, is he, is he, is he an inanimate object? Is that all he is? Well, I, there's always this fear that, oh, if I say something, if I say I'm going to raise taxes, I'm going to offend the people who want them lowered. If I say I'm going to lower them, I'm going to offend the people who want to raise it. Okay, that just means really all you want is power for power's sake. You just want to be in office because it, it looks cool or something like that. Rather than people, and, and politics a long, long time ago used to be, and, and let me know if I'm just romanticizing the past, it used to be <laughs> people who had contributed a lot to their community, who had had success in a professional life that was not politics, then decided, oh, after this 30 years or whatever of, of looking at my country, here's just, you know, three things that I'd like to change about it that I think will make it better, that I can implement through policy, and I'm going to run for office, and I'm going to be in for, you know, two terms at the most, and, and I'm going to do this. And that's my commitment to making my country a better place, not politicians for the sake of perpetual politicizing and perpetual government, which is what we're seeing now. Justin Trudeau, like I said, he's not the only one, but, but, but he's a clear sign of one of the worst ones. And everybody out there, liberals, liberals need this the most. They need a leader who's actually of substance or else they're going to stay in the third party for a long time. Yeah, no, but that, that's what a lot of public service was about uh, before politics became, I guess, just another multi-level marketing racket. But let, let me get back to some popular culture here. Can you explain to me, because you've got a, a good handle on this stuff. Can you explain to me why something that is so empty, um, and it really is, can P Politics be so or Justin? Because I no, know they're, they're both Justin. empty. I mean, ju Justin, Justin, Justin shamelessly does empty. I mean, that is his MO. I am empty. I'm a listener. I'm a receptacle. Just pour whatever gasoline you have into me, and I'll be your holding tank. So why, why is it that empty is popular? Yeah, I, I, was on, I was on this station about six months ago when, when Trudeau first announced he was running, whenever he announced, and people were, people were right away saying, great, great, or they were sinking his teeth in and saying, terrible. And I said, hold on, nobody, nobody has a right to say anything right now because he hasn't presented ideas. I said, give him a couple weeks, give him a couple months, let him present the ideas, and then, then talk about it rigorously. Now, sorry, honeymoon period's over. We have gone way too far in terms of just having no ideas for this many months. And, and you know, to your original question, sadly, I don't know. I think maybe, I think maybe social media, I think maybe the whole I just want to be loved and like culture is playing into it. But I do think we reward bad behavior and it's up to us to correct this and it's up for regular Canadians to say not acceptable. Well, I agree with you. I mean, the honeymoon period, it's over. But was, was this or was this not a sexless honeymoon? I mean, <laughs> yeah, he, he didn't did deliver the goods. Honeymoon? 
He, he didn't deliver the goods for sure at any time, and, and that's what we have to be worried about because they always say, every politician always says, oh, I, I haven't yet brought out my real stuff. That'll be once I'm elected <laughs> leader. Oh, no, and then once they're leader, they go, well, well, hold on, we gotta wait until we're in government. And then once they're in government, they never deliver their goods, they go, I gotta wait until I have a majority. When's it gonna be? Are you gonna be your own man now or never? Does this not feel like a script for some sort of movie? I mean, where uh, some guy isn't really running, is just kind of a joke, and he's just trying to, to test the population to see how little he can give them, to see how little sex he can offer during this honeymoon, to see whether they still want to be married to him. Does it not feel like a bit of a national joke? Yeah, it's kind of like a Will Ferrell slant on the Manchurian candidate or something yeah. crazy like that. Now, I, I don't think you're far off, uh, but, but it's, I, I do think that these days candidates, again, they don't first look inside themselves, look at their country, articulate a vision of what they want to do and move forward. They campaign by focus groups. They get their advisors in the room. Look, their advisors may be smart guys, but you know, if you're, if you're just a tabula raza, if you're just a blank slate, why are you running for office? Why doesn't the advisor run for office if he's the guy with the ideas? And it's really dodgy that, that that's what's going on now. Empty guys going out there and saying, me. Look, Charles, if it was just about listening, if it was just about doing exactly what the people want by, by, by plebiscite, we could just have little internet votes where we all decide what bills get passed and what don't, and we wouldn't need MPs. We're actually voting in leaders, leaders who we can get behind. It, it, we, 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 we should not. We should not have to have them go around and ask people their views on every single little issue and then just be a, be, be a direct sampling of the people. So to answer the question on the crawl on the Sun News Network screen right now, what does Justin stand for? Just give me a yes or no on this. Would the correct answer be, I stand for being an app. I am a listener app. Is that, is that, is that about right, Anthony? What does Justin stand for? I, I, I hope the producers just have a cricket sound, and you and I can just sit here for a minute, and we can play that, play that audio. We can play the crickets. Right. Got to click off here. Thank you so much. We'll see you next Friday.